Hi, I'm Professor Jones, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to construct a confidence interval for a mu. Mu is the population mean, when sigma, the population standard deviation, is known. Now, this is not very practical. There are not many times where we are trying to estimate mu, the population mean, and we know the population standard deviation. Um, usually, we need the mean to find that population standard deviation, but uh, this is helpful to kind of walk through confidence intervals with building on something that we know and it usually is building on the central limit theorem so you should have if you're not in my class if you're in my class we definitely have just studied the central limit theorem um, before kind of building on it with these confidence intervals and if you're in a different statistics class then you should be kind of walking through that as well and so this fits we can use that central limit theorem to build that confidence interval why do why is this problem like if you're just reading this problem why do we know that we need to construct a confidence interval here and how do we know that sigma is known well this last sentence tells us confidence interval okay it says to estimate the true mean with 99 percent confidence that tells you that you need to be building a confidence interval for mu the mean or the true mean or the mean of the population it goes by many names okay and then we know with this sentence right here, it says a previous study gave a population standard deviation of 1600 steps. That tells us that sigma, the population standard deviation, is known. So in this case, sigma is known. And that is very important. We are going to, I have another video on it, and if you're in a stats class, then you're probably going to move in this direction on constructing a confidence interval when sigma is not known, when you actually have to use S. And then it fits a different distribution and requires a different formula. So this is important that we know that sigma is known and we're using the correct formula and the correct distribution. So a confidence interval for when sigma is known I'm going to give you that formula. I'm going to use CI for confidence interval. Okay, is this X bar minus C sub C sigma over the square root of N. And this is an interval, so it has a lower boundary and an upper boundary. And sometimes you'll see this written in this manner where you're using a less than, they're using these less than signs to indicate that mu, our variable that we're looking for, that we're estimating here, is in between these. And then sometimes you're gonna be asked for a lower boundary and an upper boundary. And so this would be your lower boundary. I'll use B and D for boundary. And then this, would be your upper boundary on mu. Okay, so that's the formula. And we'll find both the lower and the upper boundaries here. Uh, it's something that's also asked for a lot when you're constructing a confidence interval is the margin of error. And the margin of error is what you add and subtract to x bar on either side. And so you can see that the only thing that's different in the lower boundary and the upper boundary formulas here is this sign. The, um, it's a minus here and a plus here. And so this is forming this kind of interval that you're adding something on one side and you're subtracting something on the other side and it's the same thing. And so we call this our margin of error. Usually indicated with an uppercase E and it's that Z sub C, which is a critical value, sigma over the square root of N. Okay, so sometimes that's asked for it as well, and we'll find it here um, as we go through this, this uh, problem, okay? So I just need to plug into this formula, and so therefore I just need the pieces of it, and these should be found in this paragraph, okay? So I'm just gonna write my variables here that I need, and those are x bar, z sub c, sigma, and n. Okay, so x bar is also an average, but it's the average of a sample. Okay, so you have the population, which is everybody, and then you survey a sample. That's who you survey. So here, we are just surveying 10 nurses, okay? So we know this is not the population of all nurses. That would be our understood population here, would be all 
nurses, okay? But we only surveyed 10 of them. And so we're gonna use that data to estimate the true mean or the population of all nurses, how many steps they take per day. Okay. So our X bar, our um, average of a sample is the average of these 10 nurses, which is telling me right here that they take an average of 16,390 steps. Okay, so that is my X bar. Let me come back to Z sub C. Sigma is given pretty clearly. It's the population standard deviation. So the other word for sigma is population standard deviation and it's given as 1,600. And then N is the sample size. And so that's how many people we surveyed to form our sample. And that's the 10 here. Z sub C is the critical value. We use the um, normal distribution and the central limit theorem here that tells us that if we have um, all these averages, samples from the given population of size N, um, then they are normally distributed. And so we have this normal distribution of all these sample means. And so therefore we can use a sample mean to kind of construct this confidence interval using the normal distribution. So Z sub C has to do with the confidence level, and it is a Z-score, okay, how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. And so since this is a 99% confidence interval, that's our level of confidence C, okay, and we're finding the Z-score that corresponds to um, an area of 99% or, .9 or 0.99 on either side of the mean. Now you can do this with the normal distribution, but most normal distribution charts have a table as well that lists the, uh, the C's and their corresponding Z sub C value. And so that's what we use in our class, and I'll try to link one of those below. But if you are one of my students, you're looking on that uh, normal distribution table on the back side, bottom left-hand corner is a small chart, and it lists your C's, your confidence levels, and then the corresponding Z sub C values, just to make that a little bit easier for you. So if you look up a Z sub C for a 99% confidence interval, it is 2.58. Okay. All right, so now we have all of our pieces, so we're just going to be plugging into this formula and calculating our lower and upper boundary, and we'll go ahead and also find our margin of error here. So I'm just gonna plug in X bar, and I'm gonna use a plus or minus sign here, and what this means is that I'll do this formula with the plus sign, and I'll do this formula with the minus sign, the plus sign giving me my upper boundary, and the minus sign giving me my lower boundary, because again, they're the same except for that sign. Okay, so here's X bar plus or minus Z sub C, and then sigma over the square root of N. You'll also remember in the central limit theorem that the standard deviation of the sample means is sigma over the square root of N. So this is, again, just building on that central limit theorem. Okay, so here it is plugged into the formula. I would just put this in all at once into your calculator, use a multifunction calculator. I would just put parentheses around that fraction just to make sure that you do that division first. Um, and then, because a the fraction bar means that this is done first in order of operations, and then just put it in with a minus sign, put it in with a plus sign, and get those boundaries. So I get a lower boundary of 15,084.6. and an upper boundary of 17,694.4. I'm gonna just put the steps there. Okay, and then my E, using this formula right here, which is just this part of the equation, the 2.58 times this standard deviation. Okay, and you should get 1305, 1305.4. Okay. So there's your confidence interval, lower boundary, upper boundary. I just used a hyphen in between um, to say that the mu is within this 
this interval, and then your margin of error. Okay, that's what you add and subtract to each side there. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful to you, and you can construct a confidence interval for a true mean now. Um, the only thing that's going to change if that confidence level change would be this D sub C. So if I wanted to go ahead and construct like a 95%, this would just change the Z sub C, but nothing else. Um, and it's all, again, based on that sample data. And I think this is so cool. This is one of my favorite parts of statistics that I teach because I think it's practical. You can go out and take a survey of 10 people, 10 nurses, and ask something about them. And you can use that to come up with an estimate of the entire population that fit that data. And so I think that's really, um, really cool that we can say stuff like that. And we can be 99% confident that our mu, our population mean, lies within this interval. It takes into account how small this sample is and what the standard deviation is. So hopefully that is exciting to you as well. Um, if you want to see any more of these videos, please check out my channel. I have a lot. I do similar ones to this one, like I said, where we don't know sigma and how that changes things. Um, I also have one on finding the minimum sample size needed. So check those out. And of course, please just like this video and subscribe to my channel. That's very helpful. And I hope you enjoyed. Um, and then you can leave me any questions that you have down below. Thank you so much.